you find out whether the features that you implemented are having an impact on real people. I'm Jessica Kerr, Jessitron Online, and I've been a software developer for 25 years across various languages. Got into software because it was deterministic and I could control it like a puzzle, but that puzzle has become so much more interesting once we get into production software and distributed systems and the, the users and the people who develop the software. All of these bigger systems are much more interesting. And now I work at Honeycomb because it's observability. And observability is a crucial uh, piece of that system. It's how our software talks to us to tell us what's really going on. So to a junior developer, without a lot of preconceptions, I would say Observability 2.0 is the modern way we understand how to make your software talk to you. And it says as a developer, you get to take responsibility for what do you need to know about what the software is doing in production and put in a few lines of code so that it can tell you. And then you get to look at that. And this is how you find out whether the features that you implemented are having an impact on real people. All right, as a senior developer, this is a much harder change because observability 1.0 is everything we've, we've had for a decade or two. Monitoring, logs, maybe the beginning of distributed tracing, but not in a way that you have control over. Observability 1.0 is what we've had before. Observability 2.0 takes a different tack. It says, look, Metrics are just numbers, and we've like squashed them and squished them uh, to obscure their meaning. Well, we didn't do it to obscure their meaning, but it has that effect. And logs are a bunch of disconnected uh, statements that when we go back and look at the logs and the metrics, we have to use our brains to like stitch them back together again based on how well we know the code. Uh, Observability 2.0 says, let's make this easier for ourselves. And with a little bit of effort, it's a lot less now than it used to be because of open telemetry. We can have distributed tracing built into our software in a way that we can modify it and add to every span, every piece of every distributed trace that describes a full request flow through our system through many different services. We can add to that the pieces of information that are most important to us, like what customer was this for, um, what infrastructure did it run on, um, and you can add things like, uh, okay, what was the disk space, what was the memory usage, um, and have those those numbers right with the meaning, the like text that tells us what's happening, um, and all of those events connected to each other in a causal chain, and. Suddenly debugging is a lot easier. And you can derive everything you got from logs and everything you got from metrics from these events, which ideally are stitched together into traces. So that's like the modern standard for observability. And we call it 2.0 because it really takes a different way of looking at it. As a developer, you can't say, oh, well, I mean, you could, but it's ideal if you don't say, oh, operations has to worry about that. You say, I want to know whether this feature is being used in production. I want to know whether the input is what I expected. I want to know whether people are using it, whether the performance is what I thought it was, um, and what the errors are, and what's the causal chain of where that error initiated. Also, how many times I'm accessing the database. A zillion questions that you never thought to ask and therefore did not create a metric to count. It's much more flexible, but it's also more conscious. Um, and it also, um, volume control is done in a completely different way. That's oh. another topic. Yeah, so as a senior developer, it's hard to switch to an observability 2.0 uh, mindset because we're, we have that skill of stitching together and picking out the clues and the, the footprints and the, the subtle smells of our logs and metrics. For a CTO, uh, the important thing about Observability 2.0, it is it drastically reduces downtime because it lets you get to the cause of an incident very quickly. Now, the cost considerations are different. The thing about, I'll do metrics, logs, and then events or traces. Uh, metrics 
Uh, the cost is constant for however many things you're summing. So if you're saying what's the uh, disk space across all of my computers, it costs the same, no matter how many computers you have. But as soon as you wanna know about each one, say each pod in your Kubernetes cluster, the cost goes up. And then as soon as you add any detail to that, like request count, what URL was it? What status was it? Uh, was it a, what HTTP method? You're multiplying the cost of time series. So the more useful your metrics are, the more they cost you. And that scales geometrically, not linearly. Now logs have the problem that uh, that the more of them you output, the less useful any one of them is because you can't find it. It's in this soup. Logs work beautifully uh, when it's just me on my computer and, uh, and running one thing at a time. And they do not scale to concurrency. They do not scale to distributed systems. So their usefulness decreases as their cost increases. Uh, so then we get into distributed traces. Now, distributed traces, each one tells the full story of a request. Most of your requests succeed. Most of your requests are just like the others. You want to drop most of those requests, but you want to keep all the interesting ones and you want to keep all the slow ones and then a smattering of the successful ones enough to get a statistically representative sample of what a good request looks like so that you can compare. And you can still get overall counts because you're, you're keeping uh, the statistics. Um, and this is called sampling. And I think of it as uh, you, want, you want both the forest and the trees, right? If you're like trying to take care of this forest that is your running software. And metrics are like the forest and you can derive those from your traces as long as you're adding the numbers to uh, the trace spans and you're able to aggregate across those and keep track of the sample rate. That's an important piece of functionality that we have. Um, so you can get the forest derived from the trace spans. And then when something's wrong, you want to go look at an individual tree and you're keeping all the failed ones, all the interesting stories you've kept. So you can go look at a particular injured tree and compare it to a healthy tree because you've kept some of those too uh, and see exactly what's wrong. Whereas uh, metrics traditionally can give you only the forest and logs, they don't even give you a tree. They're a pile of leaves on the ground. <laughs> uh, so I'm Jessitron online, J-E-S-S-I-T-R-O-N, um, jessitron.com, jessitron on Twitter. You can also find me at honeycomb.io slash office dash hours if you want to have a chat. Hi there. Thank you for staying with us until the end. If you want to learn more about Engineer Explains, click on one of these.